Welcome to the Breaking the Coconut Show. We are covering facts have emerged that the current educational system doesn't prepare you for the modern world. With the better of social media, a new community with its own culture and rules has emerged. This had led to the rise of job titles such as social media consultant, digital assistants, and the likes of it. John Obidi, the founder of Smart B Camp, a tribe of millennial and Generation Z digital natives who learn and unlearn the rules of the social media, tells us his story and the why behind what he does as an influencer and thought leader. John is carving a niche in a space completely non-existent prior to his emergence. So John, welcome to the BTT Show. Thank you for having me. So, so um, to someone who probably has been living under the rock, who is John? <laughs> okay, John is a man. Flesh and bones. <laughs> Very obvious. Yes. Uh, I'm an online business consultant. And that basically means I help people monetize online properties. Although I started out as a social media strategist, you know, which was cool for a while, but I began to see how evolving technologies had so much more to offer. And so I moved into the online business space. So whether you're talking about websites, podcasts, online courses, mobile apps, my forte is in figuring out how to directly monetize those platforms. Okay, and we've seen you evolve, we've seen John from, from Benin to Lagos to Smart Ecamp and what you've been doing with it. For you, how was, um, did you see the picture of John, of this present John, some years ago? Was it easy for you to um, ambition. ambition where you finally at? No, <laughs> no. Um, so how did you get from there to here? Well, someone once said, um, talking about success I read somewhere you don't have to envision the whole staircase just take the first step and the next step and the next step as a matter of fact I'm originally a software developer so my foray into social media marketing a friend of mine introduced me to it so that's what I call an accidental passion a friend of mine introduced it to me and said that this was a thing and so I was googling and researching it and I was like whoa if I could master this thing that means I would be able to publicize my apps because I was creating apps at the time. That means I would be able to, to publicize my apps because I was a very excellent web, um, web developer, mobile app developer, but no one knew about what I was doing. So I thought, okay, if I could master this thing, Facebook ads, Google ads, I could basically um, promote my own stuff without having too many moving parts to it. So that's why I learned it. And as I began to learn, people started to offer me money to do dance for them. And I'm like, okay, let's take it. <laughs> you know, and that's how I became a social media manager and a social media strategist. And then I began to go to teach and speak at events on how to handle social media. That's how it all just... That was from Benin before you came to Lagos? Well, I was doing it on a preliminary level at Benin. Okay. But in 2013, I started social media in 2013, in January 2013. And that same year, I was nominated for the Future Awards Africa Prize for New Media. So the award ceremony, the, there was a, a ceremony held in Lagos. So I came from Lagos, from Benin to Lagos, for the ceremony at the U.S. Consulate, and that was where I made the decision to move to Lagos. <laughs> you know, I met amazing people. Everybody just happy book. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, I just met amazing people, and everybody was doing something great. Seems like Lagos was this repository of knowledge and I came to Lagos first for the people okay. you know because in other places I mean no disrespect to other, other regions but you would have to really fish for months to get the kind of information you would just get here in days yeah. you know somebody you know on Twitter you could just meet him at a cafe you know and so it was it was really easy to get information the events were happening all around the place you know when I first came to Lagos I would buy business day you know, not really for the business news, but for the event section. You know, I'll flip to the event section and look, okay, where's it happening this weekend? That's how, that was my turn up, <laughs> you know. What happened this weekend? I'll look for the free events, you know, because that was what once I could afford, free events, right? So I'll go to the free events and see where it's happening. That was I was able to attend things like social media week, things that were like a myth in other parts of Nigeria, you know. So I could attend social media where I could see the influencers, I could talk with them, I could meet them in their offices, they could advise, I could model them, you know, I could do some work for them. It was um, great for the experience. So that's how I made sure, sure to move over here and it, it exploded the whole thing. Because here, you know, people just want to be excellent at whatever it is they're doing. 
sure. know, someone who's a photographer is asking, okay, how can I take my photography business, photography business online? Someone who's a, who has a fleet of cars that he's renting out is asking, how can I get on an, on an online platform? Someone who has a land to sell is asking, how can I get on Lamundi and all these um, platforms online? So the mentality here was really very progressive and that's what brought me here. And then to be in, in that intellectually charged atmosphere perpetually because that's where my growth depended on. Okay, we're in the knowledge business. Yeah. And what it means is that prior to what it used to be like, go to school, go study this, most millennials finally are on the job. Yeah. They, they finally create what they want. And I was like, in 10 years to come, I think there was no model, but in 10 years to come, what you are doing and most in, what most influencers are doing will finally look like a roadmap. What would you see has been like your own um, roadmap to finally become carbon needs for yourself? Because whether we like it or not, you're doing so much to smart food camp and that space of business. See, it's crazy if I told you 10 years ago that what you do for the rest of your life is be a social media coach. It didn't add up. Yeah. But whether we like it or not, it's a space where um, it's a life for us. Mm. And um, whether we like it or not, it will keep evolving in yeah. five, ten years. So what, yeah. what was your own roadmap and how were you able to finally cap down each and do it so well? I like what you just said, where you, you said it's a life yeah. for us, you know. So it means that our lifestyle is constantly evolving. True. You know, and social media, I don't really see it as tech. I, see, I just see it as lifestyle. It's like uh, a prosthesis, an extension of our human experience you know instead of hollering at somebody miles away you could just tweet at the person or send a dm you know a lot of connections are being made on dm you know our yeah. first connection was made through dm this is the first know. time we're even meeting yeah it's the first time we're meeting in real life yeah, and people would think that, oh we've known it. we're just meeting for the first time right true even though we've had communications we've talked on whatsapp we've talked yeah. on instagram you know yeah. so it's bridging that divide and so i see social media as an extension of culture uh, an indispensable part of our collective evolution. Yeah. So that helps me to plug in the relevant bits of technology that apply and can help extend us. So whether it's live streaming, we'll see how it applies to our environment because not everything works in different climes. Okay. We just say it works here and then we bring it on. I started the Smart Business Teleseminars in 2015. Uh, and it's basically what we're doing here, live streaming, but only audio. But the number is crazy, John. Yes, but there was a reason behind that. My initial dream was the smart business webinars. Okay. <laughs> you okay. know, video. Okay. But I had to think about it. If I were to be in the US, that would be an awesome idea. But this environment. <laughs> but this environment. All right. So there are the number of moving parts to video. First of all, I need to have great internet to stream my video. And my listeners, they're the most important part of this. They need to have that. Peter. Yeah, so even if I can do all the magic and put it together, can they? And yeah. if they can, how many? I was, I was thinking of reach. So I said, okay, let me pause on webinars and see if I can find a means by which people with GPRS connections, edge connections, the most modest internet speeds can access my content. And so I came up with the Smart Business Teleseminars. Mm -hmm. And so I did some research in the area of internet radio to okay. see how that space worked. Actually, in 2012, I had a live streaming company called Foundcast. Okay. So we had some internet radio technology. I simply went in there, tweaked some things, and made it into the smart business teleseminars. So the main reason that thing caught on was the easy accessibility. Okay. Any internet enabled device could access it and stream. With maybe less than 100 naira, you can listen to me for one hour. Wow, okay. You know, so, so that, that, that was me, uh, you know, putting my finger to the pulse to know where exactly we were, not getting uh, arrogant with technology as uh, 2015, you know. So, fingers to the pulse, I began, I was listening, 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 and as things began to get better, I moved into webinars. Okay, um, so um, early in 2016, I worked on a book called Breaking the Coconut. This is Breaking the Coconut. Mm. Actually, the idea was that we needed to, um, I needed to tell the narrative of African millennials who are finally carving a niche, and people like you who are finally owning that space and who will finally be looked up in the next 10 years. And, and this is me to you, John. What has it been? Um, there's a John in the social media we all see, and, but there's a John who has um, literally broken his own coconut. That most of us are now aware of. So what, what has it been like you behind behind the scene? Typical Nigerian, typical Nigerian millennial. What's mm. your own journey? First off, uh, there's this notion among the people of our generation, you know, that you know, technology, it might work in Obodo Ibo, you know, but 
it's uh, it might not necessarily work here, you know. But if you're willing to just try it out, you might be surprised at what you'll find, you know. So, like I told you, I'm a programmer, so I like to try new things. I'm a scientist. Let's try it. See how it works. Try it. See how it works. It's not been easy given the state of infrastructural development that we're at now, but most things are possible. You know, I tell people in my community, every serious Nigerian working with the internet must have like four modems, four mm -hmm. separate internet connections. In my house, I have about five, four to five, you know. Yeah, I know when you're in tier one countries, you don't need all that, but we are here. Yeah. What are the rules of this environment? Have five modems, mm -hmm. if you are serious to work, right? So that's one. So would I really call it a challenge? I would just say it's a reality. Okay. You know, so, and like I said, we have to be quick to adapt. There's no time to spend moaning over it, like, oh, this is the way we are. Another thing is um, electricity, right? I mean, we've, we're born in this country, we've always been here. These issues have always been with us. And they might go away someday, but right now, this is where we are. So, what is the next reality? I call myself an inverter. <laughs> you know, it's, it's that simple. So, nobody will not get light at all at all. Light comes, it goes, but when it does come, it, it charges the inverter. I have electricity. So that's how I've been able to stay up. And it's not really as expensive, it's just the initiative to do these things. When I first came to Lagos, um, though I couldn't afford those things yet, I realized that the CC Hub, Cooperative Hub at Yaba, was doing some kind of incubation. Okay. Um, I don't know how much it costs now, but the price then was 30,000 naira per year. Okay. To be able to use their incubation, use their electricity, use their internet. So that was awesome. I just subscribed for that. So every morning, that was my office. And I think you could even receive your mail there, physical yeah. mail there. Yeah. And though I didn't use that, but I needed the internet, I needed the light. So that's what I, what I used for the first year. But in another parallel universe, some Nigerians in the same Lagos would probably complain, ah, we don't have lights. But maybe they're not aware. Internet. Yeah, but it's the same internet I have that you have. I was coming from Benin City. That's, uh, it's hard to break, it's, no, no seriously, it's hard to break from Benin to, Lagos is a crazy tribe. Yeah. For you to finally break into Lagos and finally you you have that, you don't need to introduce yourself so much. So that means you must have done so much. But you see, it's because I was coming from Benin. See. You knew, you knew going backwards. No, I understand. Understand. Like four weeks into my um, arrival here, I had this deal to, uh, my um, social media tips were on the MTM platform. And if a very good friend of mine that I met here was like, man, John, you're on fire. You're so, you're so, I said, guy, you were born in Lagos. You have seen Lagos finish. I know where I'm coming from. <laughs> I got to have the lounge like you. I know where I'm coming from. When I first came to Lagos and I saw, um, what was the raining internet then? Um, I, I got Smile Internet. It was the fastest thing I had ever seen. To me, it was like, wow. I wasn't looking at the cost, but the fact that it was there. In Benin, I had the idea to do live streaming. There was no internet in Benin that could accommodate live streaming. Okay. I had these things, cameras. I had. There was no internet in Benin. The best you get for internet was MTN 3G, and the frames would be dropping like crazy. So when I came here and I saw Smile 4G, eh? I did speed test. This thing is really fast. One Mbps, two Mbps. I was like, wow. So that was how I came here with those eyes of there's opportunity here. Yeah. Right. Okay. So how did I find CC Hub? I did find them now. I'm looking for opportunity. You know, you can't. It's hard to find what you're not looking for. True. So I didn't come here. Looking, look, I was looking for where is the opportunity. My mates were telling me, oh, Lagos, there's traffic. Look at traffic at the. And, and when I came, there was truly traffic. But I, then I was in a place at uh, Ogudu. But I realized that my commute from Ogudu to the island where I was doing some work took about uh, about two hours in the morning going and two hours in the evening coming back. I, re I just realized that okay, that is two hours where nobody will interrupt me. I turned that into my library, so I was reading books, e-books on my Android device at the time, going and coming. I, I made the, the, the buses my mobile library. So my the bus going, I will read books. That's how I consume so much present development information. I use that time to catch up on things that will happen in the social media space. So it's the eyes of opportunity. So anyway, that's how I found CC Hub. You know, uh, a friend of mine was was situated somewhere close there, the idea hub there. And we began talking. I just found all these smart people. They are programming, they are doing this startup, that startup. I mean, it's like reading TechCrunch, right? And coming to see it live, playing yeah. for your eyes. I mean, maybe not at that level, but this is the way I saw it. Lagos was my New York. I'm saying that without any shame. <laughs> Lagos, Lagos was like my New York. I would walk, at the time um, I was at a church, this present house, okay. on uh, at, at Lucky Phase One. Yeah. And, you know, I was supposed to take a, I was done with my business there. I was supposed to take a bus. 
from there back to Lake Ifezor Junction. I deliberately trekked so I could just look. <laughs> so my attitude to succeeding here will not be the same as somebody who's a native. Very true. Yeah, very true. Do some research. You'll see that in in other countries, the United States, the, the UK, the people who are the most driven are the immigrants. Immigrants, true. Very true. <laughs> right? Very true. Because people who are there, you know, they, they, are, they are spoiled. You have your your your, your healthcare. You have four hundred one k. It's easy to take it for granted. It's easy to take it for granted. But when you're coming from a place where this you're seeing, people are complaining about is your gold. You know, <laughs> you strike it. You strike it much harder. So. I came there without eye of opportunity. So I came, I thought it was available. I was going there every morning, doing my work, and I was able to do so much. Imagine for one whole year, not paying for internet or electricity. That was smart. A whole year, you know, and it's high quality. And not just that, the people that also come there are also on the same mission as you are. So there's so much more information. I mean, someone like Jason Nunjoku, who was like, you know, Zeus to those outside Lagos. You would just see him walk in, we have a conversation. Um, his co founder, um, Bastian Gutter, okay. you know, would walk in there, you know, we'd just have a friendly chat. People that you, they are just out there in the class, you see them in real life in Lagos. So those are the eyes of opportunity I used to come here, you know, and that informs everything that I'm doing. There's so much opportunity here. I mean, some people say this thing that, you know, a lot of Nigerians are running out, but the Chinese and the Indians are coming here. What are they seeing that we're not seeing? You know, so um, there's, a, there's a saying that you can't see the picture if you're in the frame. Mm, very true. Right. So when you are in an environment, it's easy to get used to it. It's easy to get to a cost of tools and take things there for granted. Sometimes so for you, it wasn't that. It wasn't that. I was from outside coming in. So I was seeing Lagos like, wow, this amazing place that had opportunities that people outside did not have. And they still exist. People in Oweri do not have what we have here in Lagos. You know, people in Port Harcourt do not have what we have here. You know, so coming here, that was just all that, that, that mattered. But it's this philosophy that I take into any space. When I got to social media strategy, I wasn't thinking, people, people have that issue. How do I enter this new space? Nobody knows my name, nobody knows anything. For me, for me, it was, it was great, like it was a blank slate. So I can make mistakes, right? I can get on a public speaking platform and stutter. No wahala, nobody knows me. I'm not a big name. I'm not like Charles to me. Now they were like, ha! The yeah. Nakiji blog will carry it. No, it was that. <laughs> you know? But I was nobody, but that was, it was a good thing that I was nobody because I could afford to make a lot of mistakes that the big players could not. You know, so when I came here, I used to apply to speak on platforms. I know, let me come and speak to your people about social media strategy. Um, I would go to events bright and look for events in Lagos. Anything around social media, I would contact the organizers. Let me come teach your guys for free on social media and they'll be like, okay, it's free, fine, come around. So it worked for you? Yes. <laughs> you know, I would go there and of course I would deliver, you know, I mean, I, I look good, I sound good, I mean, come on, <laughs> I did try, <laughs> you know, so, so I would go there, I would deliver, you know, I had these complimentary cards I printed in one color in Lagos like that, I paid 5k, they did plenty, <laughs> you know, very low quality but had my number, that's the important thing, <laughs> you know, that was the hustle, so I came there, I would see, they were like, wow, would like you to come to our NGO to teach our people about this, very good, get my card. I would like you to come to our company and that's how I just started and I just kept on going and going and going. I did, it didn't matter to me that I was usually pulling up to these venues in buses and in kekes. But I did not care, I was nobody. The only was nobody so I had to talk, <laughs> you know, so. But, but it's that eye of opportunity, you know. And even at this level, it's still the same um, thing that, that I, I factor in. We, we launched last year the Smart Big Camp Academy. It is our own e-learning platform and people can purchase courses like Udemy, Skillshare, Lynda.com. Awesome. If I've done any survey like what do you think, you know, will an e-learning platform thrive in Nigeria? Oh, uh, you know, there are other ones. Why would they listen to your own? I just did it. Opportunity, I just did it. And within the first uh, 48 hours or so, we had 500 registered students on that platform. Right? And that's because it's eye of opportunity. Okay, we have an e-learning platform. How do we get people to register on it? I put out a number of free courses. I put out the word on the, the platform where we had some social capital. And people signed up. The courses were done by Nigerians that they could relate True. to. And so it caught on really quickly. You know, so I could talk about many different things, but that eye of opportunity you know, that, 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 that I, I took to come into this space. And that's what I still take in every single 
thing that I go into. Tomorrow you get uh, I've done I went into fashion. <laughs> well, are you are, are you are you are you at any point scared of living up to that um, name John Obidi that you built? Oh no, I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I mean, uh, no big getter. <laughs> what what is there to be afraid of? I know that sometimes a fear that a lot of big players have is that okay, I'm now this. People regard me as this, you know, and so they tend to be very careful, you know. Um, but there's this book I read. It's called David and Goliath by uh, Malcolm Gladwell. Gladwell. It talks about the advantage in every disadvantage and the disadvantage of every advantage. There is a disadvantage of being big, like Goliath. You're big, you're mammoth, and so you can't move. You're not as quick on your feet as and nimble. Yeah. That there's so much bureaucracy, too many moving parts. But when you're small, you can quickly move. So and no one sees you coming. In my mind, I'm always small. In my mind, I'm always a newcomer, <laughs> right? So I'm not. I'm not really scared of oh, John Obidi. Ah, uh, your shoe was dirty the other day, okay. <laughs> What's that? Oh, John Obidi, uh, this year, all oh, this don't matter to me. Uh, I'm, I'm 30, I'll be 31 later this year. I have only about, I don't know how many more, I think it's 60, by this of God, productive years <laughs> left. I don't, I don't spend a fraction of my time thinking about that, but how much more of my life I can maximize, right? New technology is coming, how can I maximize this? How can I bring this to my tribe? You know, and how can we play with this? The money part actually comes later, but this is opportunity. How can we use this? So do you think, because... do you think, do you think John has finally broken your own coconut? Um, I see the break and the go. How many you don't break? I, I know the count. Just the break and the go. You sure say you don't break anyone? Just the break and the go. You smash and the go. <laughs> and the philosophy. Okay, you say breaking the coconut in your own dialect. Ah, I know they speak like that too. John, this eh? is it. <laughs> breaking the coconut in your own dialect. <laughs> Uh, I would have said pigeon is my dialect, but it's the same thing in pigeon. <laughs> they scatter the coconut. <laughs> That's not your lingua. <laughs> I can't speak, sorry. <laughs> so you just try, try. Where are you from? I'm from Delta State. Okay, so which of the, um, yeah. Which of the Delta language? We speak Igbo, we speak Igbo. Okay, good. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. I don't speak. <laughs> So who did this to you? You had a gun to my head, I still wouldn't give you an answer. I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. Oh God. The best I can do is Yoruba, but my Yoruba is even still very worse. Okay, let's so. try. Let's try Yoruba. No, you? It, 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 not just no. I will lose my rep. All my fans will offend me. It's, <laughs> it's best to offend me. No, forgive me if I can't speak, but not when I murder it. <laughs> no, it's a fan of it. Try, try, try. This is Nigeria. And um the idea is that for most influencers, irrespective of what we do, um, we finally connect. See, there's no way you can motivate me the people that I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you're trying to say. Oh, Jesus, help us! <laughs> All I know is why. They are, they are, they are break. I don't know. Break coconut. No. I, I don't know such violent words. <laughs> okay, so, okay. Breaking the coconuts. English. <laughs>